Welcome back, everybody, on the Doc Bob Lee. Another fantastic guest in line right now. He's on Open, and he's a social entrepreneur, environmentalist, eco gastrometer, and he's here today to highlight the work that he is doing with the new NYC DC Fellowship and how his organization, Reborn Farms, will help create an equitable and eco friendly food system in our community. So please welcome to the show, Henry Obispo. Henry, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah. As we get into it, uh, you know, you, you're doing a whole lot. And uh, we thank you for all that you're doing for our environment and, and our community. Tell us a little bit about the, your organization and what it's all about. Yeah. So I've been working in the South Bronx. I'm from the Bronx. Um, arrived to its shore at the age of six in the Dominican Republic. And I... I've always engaged in um, obviously the life in the Bronx, but you know, once I became an adult, I realized that uh, there was much more that I could do. And upon you know going to uh, going to uh, school and college, and then uh, graduating with, uh, from graduate school, I ended up really focusing on certain areas that really were impactful for me growing up. Um, and many of them had to do with access and yeah. actually the lack of access that we have specifically in our community, specifically in the South Bronx, as it is considered the poorest urban congressional district in the country. And th those are real realities when you grow up here. And I, I just was afforded the opportunity to, to also see the world and engage in ways that I can bring reference and context to the life also that we were living here. And that prompted me to uh, think in ways of not just change, but, um, you know, thinking ways of how we could do things different. And we already knew the issues that we were having, but how do we approach them different? And so that's really how I started engaging in the community, community organizing and uh, activism and creating initiatives around food, food justice, yeah. and food sovereignty. And, and you, you have that going on right now, or, or is that the, the goals for Reborn Farms? Yeah, so that is uh, why we were chosen uh, to uh, be part of this fellowship um, that the city uh, EDC um, launched, um, this inaugural fellowship, the city fellowship. And it was really to look at um, issues um, in neighborhoods for people of color um, and yeah. uh, BIPOC owned uh, initiatives that were focusing in tech. And so we have already been, have already started, we piloted the program about four years ago, and now we're scaling that program here in the mm -hmm. South Bronx. How will this impact the long-term success of uh, immigrant uh, BIPOC restaurant owners? So the idea is that we would engage the entire community in this idea of food and this idea of sovereignty, this idea that you can empower yourself and through food. And it means empowering your community, but also economically. And so one of the ways that we seek to empower um, specifically uh, BIPOC um, immigrant uh, mom and pop owners or restaurant owners is to engage them so that they could engage in this idea of access, so that they could think of themselves just like a high-end restaurant somewhere can source this fresh produce and the most amazing organic stuff. Um, why can't they? Um, yeah. And it's usually because they, you know, there's an, an economic factor, but also it's not tailored for us. It's not tailored for them. And the difference with this project is that we center these people because that's the people that we want to engage with. It's not about the highest bidder. It's actually no. the very opposite. You are actually disqualified if you're the highest bidder. You need to be no. a person that didn't have access to be able to join in this project. Yeah. And what does it mean, uh, Henry, to be a, a food justicer? It's really all encompassing um, when you're focusing around many of the ideas I mentioned um, and in many ways, you embody that. Um, yeah. You live that. Um, you not only uh, it's not, it's, 
not only preaching, but it's really part of your lifestyle and it really is um, part of your world that it is how you see the world and it is a revolution you want to see. So therefore, many of the things that you do or the components that you engage in in life also are always uh, um, in conjunction with these ideas, with these ideas of justice, of food, of access. They, they go hand in hand with everything that you do. So for me specifically, it is one and the same with anything that I do in life, whether, you know, um, if I go on vacation, I'm thinking about those communities where, where I'm going on vacation. I'm engaging with uh, people in those areas that yeah. may, not, may not have access, maybe bringing, you know, uh, uh, the dollar to them. Um, yeah. Or if I'm home, if I'm here, I'm engaging um, in collective activism around these ideas. I'm engaging with organizations. I'm creating initiatives. Um, every aspect of your life, for me, has that component. It's sort of the integral part of yourself that you yeah. take with you around these ideas. And do you find that when you travel, you're looking for places where um, you can eat healthy? Because I, I know when I, you know, I'm looking around, especially if you're on a highway, you know, <laughs> there's nothing really good, good that you can find that will, you know, be good for you. So yeah, of definitely. There's so many, um, I mean, you know, growing up uh, in the South Bronx, you, you, there were so many limits um, yeah. and you had to do with what you had and you had to be creative in many ways. And I find that I still do that, um, but yeah. now from a different perspective because I, you know, I'm vegan now, um, and sort of the idea of food means a little bit different, has a different meaning now for me than it did before because I definitely need to seek out these places, um, yeah. specifically because it's part of my uh, foundation in terms of how I decide to feed myself and what I decide to give my money to. So I'm very intentional with that. And sometimes you just don't find these places and you end up, you know, I don't know, eating fruit for the entire day. I don't yes. know. Um, or you got to bring your own, right? You got to bring your own. Yeah, you bring your own. Or, or, you, or you come up with a company called Reborn Juice. <laughs> or, you, or, you, or you come up with a company to be able to satisfy that for yourself and others. That's right. Where can we find out about everything that you're doing on, on like a website or social media? Yeah, definitely. You can go on our social media. It's called Born Juice. Um, on Instagram and on Facebook. You can also reach us at uh, our website, which is bornjuice.com, and also engage with me uh, uh, on Instagram. Um, you can find me, uh, you can search for me. And, you know, soon to come as we launch um, all of the ideas that will fall uh, within this project of Reborn Farm, um, we definitely welcome everyone to engage with us to be a part of it and to contribute however they can because it takes more than just one person or one idea. It really takes us all to be able to move things forward and to shift this reality that we've been living in. Well, Henry, thank you so much. Thank you for all that you're doing to help uh, keep uh, our community healthy. Henry Albispo, yes, founder, CEO, Reborn Farms. Thank you so much. Bobby thank Steve. you, Dr. Lee. You're welcome so much. And Bobby C's up next. You're to sports? Uh, some. All right, he's up next. Check this out. He's up next. He has the, the latest in the world of sports next.